Hello and welcome to my channel, The Sports Guru 716. I'm Andy and I hope you enjoyed today's episode of Fights of the Night. Last night there were six fights in nine games, which is nice to see because there hadn't been any in a few days now. Some of them were pretty good fights, especially, in my opinion, the Cody Bass Derek Dorsett fight. Comment below with your thoughts on any of these fights. I recommend you pause the video, go into the description below, click the fight link if you haven't seen it, watch the fight, come back to my video, and comment your opinion. And we'll see how they compare. Thank you for watching. With the first fight of the night on January 26th, we saw Tori Krug and Chris Stewart bout go at it. Now, I must say, as you can tell here, there is a huge size differential between Krug and Stewart, as well as an experience difference. Now, this obviously ends up playing a huge role in the fight. I give Tori Krug a ton of credit because Chris Stewart came up to the front of the net. Boston had just went up 1-0. It was still early in the first period. And Stewart, you know, popped Krug with a little shot, and then Krug didn't take it. He went right back at him, and he dropped him with Stewart. And Stewart is known around the league as being a tough hockey player. And as you can tell here, he had, thought he had the advantage in size and everything else. And in the end, Tory Krug did lose this fight, as you can tell. But I give the kid a ton of credit. He really tried. He, he went at it with a guy that a lot of people probably wouldn't have. You know, he's only got three career fights. He... 5'9", 180 pounds. At 5'9", there aren't too many players that will fight in the league. So, I, you know, all the credit to him. With the next fight of the night, we see Zach Bogosian and Zach Smith go at it. Now, they are very evenly matched in terms of height. Smith has a weight advantage and an experience advantage. This fight occurred because Zach Smith played dirty in front of the net. And, frankly, I think he should have gotten an extra penalty because... Bogosian gives him a light cross check in the back. And what Smith does in retaliation is puts a stick in between Bogosian's legs and goes up into his crotch with it. Now, this causes Bogosian to slash Smith, and got, that got Smith's attention real fast. And Smith turns around, and he looks at Bogosian, and Bogosian looks at him. And, you know, they start slashing each other back and forth, and then they just go at it. Smith ends up winning this fight. The fight wasn't very long. There weren't a lot of shots thrown, but Smith landed one really good shot. Knocked Bogosian's helmet off, knocked him off his feet, and that was the difference, really, because this fight did not have many uh, punches thrown, not many punches landed, but Smith was the only one to actually land a significant punch. And frankly, it's a shame because Bogosian probably had the right to knock Smith on his butt because Smith decided to play dirty. So Next, we see a fight between two very young players. As you can tell, Aaron Eckblad's first career fight, the former first overall pick, against Peter Holland. This fight really just kind of started with a puck battle along the boards, and, you know, they pushed each other a couple times. They looked at each other, and they started going. You know, Aaron Eckblad, I got to give him a ton of credit. He tried to fight in his first fight. Uh, Holland, I give him credit because Eckblad's bigger than he is, 30 pounds heavier, but, you know, Ekblad was the only one to really land punches in this fight. They were very close. A lot of body shots. There was, a, there was a lot of grappling. It was pretty much a grappling match with only body shots thrown. Ekblad got one or two in on Holland in the face, but that's there's the difference in this fight, really, because you see this this fight, it was one nothing Toronto. There was another fight later in this game that I'll talk about next, and... Frankly, this game, Toronto went up one nothing, and it went downhill from here. Ekblad served his purpose with this fight. He was able to get his team going, and this pretty much put the team over the edge. This is what made the difference, and this is how they uh, took over the game. The period ends one nothing, but Florida ends up winning the game 5-1 to one in the end. So with the other fight in the Toronto-Florida game, we have Dion Phaneuf and Dmitry Kulikov. Now, as you can tell, they are close in size in weight, but Phaneuf is better known for his fighting than Kulikov is. As you can tell, Kulikov has played in the league for probably five or six years now and only has five career fights. This was more Kulikov answering the bell because Dion Phaneuf took a run at uh, Quentin Howden and boarded him, in which case Kulikov took it upon himself to go after Phaneuf. Now, 
I give him credit for doing it. That was a that was a ballsy move by Kulikov, but he is not uh, he is not picking his right the right fight with this one. Uh, Fanuf dominated him. This was an ugly fight, really. Fanuf whooped on Kulikov, and it was it was a real sight to see, I must say, because you gotta give Kulikov, like I just said, all the credit. Just like I gave Krug, Krug credit earlier in the you got to give Kulikov a ton of credit for what he did. You just, you do. Because you have to answer that. You have to tell Phaneuf it's not going to happen anymore. And he tried. With our second to last fight of uh, January 26th, we have two bigger guys going at it with Jared Tenorti and Anthony Peluso. Peluso is known around the league as one of the tougher guys. They're both very young players. And as you can tell, they're about the same height. Peluso is a little heavier. Tenorti kind of kept Peluso from going to the front of the net in their game, in which case Peluso kind of slashed at Tenorti, and both of them are not going to back down from each other, so they drop them. Like I said, these guys are known for what they do. Tenorti, this was his first fight, I believe, for Arizona, coming over in the John Scott trade. He has John Scott's number, and he fills the role John Scott provided. Now, Tenorti's a better hockey player, but Peluso won the fight. Peluso got a couple real good shots in, but really this fight wasn't too much of a uh, of a beatdown. It was pretty even, a lot of grappling, but Peluso was the one that ended up landing some shots. And lastly, with the last fight of the night, we see Cody Bass and Derek Dorsett. Now, as you see here, there is an advantage in height to Bass, barely, but a significant weight advantage. Whereas Dorsett has a huge experience advantage. And this plays a huge role in this fight because Dorsett is used to fighting bigger guys. But this was the best fight of the night, in my opinion, and in a lot of people's opinions. I saw on HockeyFights.com they considered this a draw. In the most, most cases, it was considered a draw. And honestly, I could see that. In my opinion, I believe this fight just started because, it, you know, it was kind of staged, to be honest. And Dorsett ended up winning it. Now, Dorsett landed more punches than Bass did. But the fact of the matter is this. They fought. And they both could have won this fight. In some people's opinion, Bass won this fight. And in my opinion, I have to say Dorsett won it. Gotta give Dorsett credit. He fights when he is only 175 pounds. But to be honest, you know, Bass... Bass tried. He tried. but And, and they went at it. They... Started throwing rapid fire punches at each other nonstop, just going at each other, not blocking each other's punches for like 10 seconds. And it just, it got pretty wild. So, yeah, that was definitely the fight of the night. All right, and that should close it out. Thanks for watching my episode of Fights of the Night. If you liked it, leave a like down below. Comment down below if you have any criticisms or opinions. And I read every comment and I reply to every comment at this point because I don't get too many. So... Give me anything that you'd like me to talk about on my Spit in the Truth series as well. Maybe the topic that you'd like us to talk about, Dylan and I, on the uh, podcast this weekend. So, yeah. Thanks for watching.